How's it going guys? Um, we've just finished up work here for the day, cutting the firewood. Um, I just thought I'd make a short video on maintenance, you know, cleaning, preventative maintenance, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to work on the 210C here today, just because it's a bit different with the um, toolless chain adjustment and all that sort of stuff. Um, the stuff we don't need anything you know, fancy to do anything like this, you want your, your chainsaw tool. The cleaning pick is a good thing to have, or an o-ring pick, you know, depending what you call them. Um, a brush is always good, you have know, a nylon one like this, or a soft metal brass one like this. Um, and your Torx driver, this is one that comes with most saws, or you could use just a, a T27 socket bit on a handle here. Um, a, tool tr a little parts tray is always good. This came out of an old tackle box or something, but just put the nuts and bolts in, make sure you don't lose anything. Um, clean rag. Um, some liquid gold, WD-40. Um, it's probably not the best thing to use to be cleaning a saw with, but it's what I've got, so I use it. And this is the sharpener that we use. It's nice and simple to use. I'll give you a quick rundown of that. But that's it. Um, one thing I want to say as well, don't underestimate the owner's manual. This is one I printed off myself, it's for the 210. Um, basic things like, you know, maintenance, replacing the coil, um, starter rope, all that sort of stuff. Um, I've got in the back here as well a full parts breakdown. This, is, this one happens to be for the 210 as well. Um, just everything, you know, all the, the tensioning parts and even the bar. We've got all the part numbers here as well. You know, so it's all here. It's it's good to have. That way you don't have to you know, ring still themselves and say, I've got this saw, I need to know what this part is. You can you know you can look and it gives you the names as well in here. So yeah, pin head self-tapping screw. Just you know, all those kinds of things. It's good to have. I know a lot of people gawk at it because, you know running chainsaws for years, especially the owner's manual part. Um, they've been running chainsaws for years, I don't need to know how to do all this stuff, but you know, it's always good to have a little bit of a refresher, especially with the servicing part of it. Not so much, you know, the starting and things like that, but you know, just tips and tricks and all the sort of stuff, all the manufacturer recommended procedures for servicing, adjusting the carburetor here, um, spark plug stuff, in the, the ignition coil here, how to tie the knots even, you know, it's, it's just good to have. Alright, I'll get this away and we'll start right, so work. The first thing we want, and the thing I forgot to mention, is gloves. They use mechanics gloves, they don't give you as much protection as the big thick cutting gloves, but um, you keep your hands protected from the heat and you know, that kind of stuff. It gives you a bit more control than the thicker gloves and stops you from getting burnt cut, getting oil all over your hands, all that sort of stuff. So, the 210C. Let's get the bar cover off here. She's relatively dirty. It wasn't a big day, but it was a, definitely a full day. So I'm just going to start off by taking the bar cover off here. Since she was a pain. And off she comes. Alright, so nice and dirty as you'd expect. Um, slack off the chain there a bit. Pull the chain and bar off. Again, it's nice and dirty and full of crap. We'll clean that up in a minute. So, we're left with sprocket drum, oiler system, the bar nuts, all that kind of crap. So, we'll take our soft bristle brush and we'll just start cleaning this out. You're obviously not going to be able to get it to brand new but we'll try as best we can. I'm not too worried about the, ex the external part of the saw for now. usually do that last. Um, at the moment we're just going to clean it all out. Um, if your brush gets a bit clogged and dirty, get your cleaning fluid spray it in and back to nice and clean again and keep going. Now, again WD-40 is probably not the best thing to use 
it does leave a small amount of residue so therefore I wouldn't use it say on the inside of the, the clutch drum here or on the part where the chain brake grabs just for safety reasons but it is a good clean fluid. Um, we'll get our rag and we'll just wipe the, most of the, the residue out. Now at this point you want to inspect, just grab my poker here you want to inspect this particular groove here, this is your oiler groove or where the, the bar oil comes from just going to clean all the crap out of it, make sure you're getting good oil flow that kind of thing. This doesn't actually have a chain catcher it's all sort of built into the this clutch cover here um, so there's not really much to inspect around that area but as long as everything's nice and tight Everything's clean, everything's looks like it's in working order. We can move on. Okay, next we've got the bar and chain. Um, it's a bit different from the, the typical bar because it has the adjuster system here for the toolless chain adjuster. So the first thing we're going to do is take that off. I've put a small mark on the saw here, which I'm just going to redo because this bar is worn to the point where there's no graphic on it anymore this is what I use instead so it's come off the side without the cross it'll go back on the side with the cross and that'll position the bar upside down so the bar rails wear evenly so we'll get this off here we just need the Phillips head on the chainsaw tool or flat head sorry not Phillips head and we'll get that out just one single screw that holds it on. Put that in our tray. We'll get that off. And as you can see, there's quite a build-up of crap. So again, with our soft bristle brush, we'll clean that out. Now, we've got on the bar. A little bit closer here. These small holes here. There's one on the other side. These are the oiler holes. This is where the hole comes from the oiler groove, what I call it anyway, into the bar where the chain picks it up and it's fed around and fed to the sprocket nose. That is a good big priority. You want to make sure that is nice and clean and free from crap. Very important to make sure it's clean. That way prolong the life of your bar obviously. So after we've got all the major crap off, we'll come back with the rag generally pretty clean. I mean it's, you know, it's not the dirtiest part of the saw by any means. I'm not you know, entirely sure what they put this hole in the bar for. Maybe it's just for hanging, you know, hanging the bar when it's not in use, that kind of thing, which makes sense I guess. Just clean that out as well. I'm gonna check the um, sprocket nose, or the sprocket. Just Run it around a few times, again with your gloves on, because these rails can become quite sharp. Just, you know, run it around. If it feels nice and smooth, then you're good. If not, you know, a few squirts of lubrication down inside there is all it really needs. These Most of the, most bars I've come across don't actually have a grease hole, grease port. So, you know, if, if your bar has a small hole in the top here, similar to the oil hole down the back here, um, you can buy specialised grease guns and pump a few squirts of grease down in there. But, um, other than that, I think it's pretty good. The last step is to use you know, some of these chainsaw tools. They come very narrow at the end, almost too narrow. And so you can run that through the groove in the bar. And it fits down in there nice and perfect. And you just want to drag out all the crap. You don't want to put too much, you don't want to be jamming it in there. Just sit it in there till it rests and pull it back on both sides. When you do it, you want to make sure you're dragging it away from the sprocket nose so you don't drag a whole bunch of crap into the, the bearings up there. And that's it. You want to check down through the top and just make sure the oil holes are clear in the top as well as in the sides. And they seem to be. If you're in any doubt, you can shine a light and it brings up the hole relatively good. You can see nice down straight through and clear. You can see light coming through when you shine it this way. 
so it's nice and clear. Right, the, the, um, move on to the chain in a minute. The worm gear for the chain adjuster obviously gets packed full of crap. I just spray a bit of fluid on it because there's a lot of nooks and crannies and just sort of helps clean them out of there. And then with the soft brush and clean out all the crap. You want to spin the mechanism around because it moves up and down and exposes new pieces of the, the gear itself. So spin it around as you're cleaning and clean underneath it. The other side's not too bad, it's nothing special. Again, get in there with your brush, give it a bit of a scrub, and come back with your rag and wipe it out. Clean and dry-ish is what we're sort of aiming for. You know, a little bit of oil on these parts is not a bad thing. Again, it's, it's maintenance, it keeps everything well lubricated and we all know lubrication is a good thing. Um, wind it out again and you'll come across parts down in heat where it's all still full of crap. Just want to wipe that out of there, get it out of there. Keep it all nice and clean. There we go. Just going to clean out these holes here. So I love to get full of crap as well. Not so much the uh, threaded hole, but there is a, I don't know really what you call it, but another small lip that locks into the bar when you put the screw in and that sometimes gets, gets full of crap. It's always good to keep it nice and clean. So that to me is pretty good. Um, next we'll move on to the chain itself. Now this chain does need a light sharpening, it's not very dull but it has done a fair bit of work so I'll give it a few light strokes. You just want to go over it and inspect all the links you don't have to put each one under a microscope, but just to look over each, you want to check for any cracks, any rivets that might be loose, anything like that, any major chips in any of the teeth, that sort of thing. It all looks pretty good. So this one's right to go back on. Um, some people go to the extent of soaking them and, and just really getting, getting in there with a scrubbing brush and cleaning them up that way. Um, I've only had to do that a few times with a few really dirty chains from cutting some very muddy wood. But it's not a necessity, you know, this chain has done a lot of work and it's relatively clean. It's clean enough that it can be inspected. Um, if it was being put away for the winter, I would spray it down with some oil. Um, either some, some WD-40 oil or some yeah, something, something along those lines anyway. Just to prevent it from rusting. But it's going to be used again in a couple of days time so this is fine right so I'm just going to reinstall the sprocket here um, again my technique because this doesn't have any markings left on it I've got my cross there I took it off the side without the cross so it's going to go back onto the crossed side yeah I'm just going to loosen this up a bit and when you put it on it will sit down in the holes nice and flip it over now again, only one of these small holes has threads. To identify which one, it's going to be the top one in this case. Uh, actually, no, it's not. It's going to be the bottom one. There we go. So just start it off. You don't have to put a three-foot pry bar on it or anything. You know, just tighten it up, nice and snug. Um, I've I've seen a few people put um, some blue Loctite on this nut because it kept coming loose. I haven't had that problem and this saw's quite a few years old. So, fits on there nice. Just want to spin it back and forth and it's, it's pretty damn good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any complaints about that at all. They do rub a little but this isn't a part of the saw that's spinning. This only moves when you move your adjuster and then it's clamped down. So a little bit of a little bit of rubbing is not a, a, a major concern. And that's it. Alright. Right, so the final piece for cleaning is going to be the clutch cover, sprocket cover, brake cover. It has several names. Um, and again we'll just same method as everything else, we'll get in there with our soft brush and clean out all the crap, all the, the larger particles of crap. 
dispatch some of the stuff here to this assembly here. Um, I'm fairly certain there's a way to actually pull this apart, but I'm not that concerned. Um, I can clean everything with fit relatively well, so I'm not too concerned about getting it all the way apart. One thing I do usually take off is this stainless steel cover here. So again, I'm use the bar tool. I'm just going to use a, a proper screwdriver for this one. It's a bit easier. Actually, the, um, it is a nice small screw, so even the, uh, yeah, the other carburetor adjusting screwdriver is a good one to use for this one. Fits in there, not fits in the groove nice. It doesn't slip off like that. In our tray, lift this off, and we have a fair bit of crap underneath there. It's not too bad, but I like to give it a bit of a wipe down, keep it nice and clean. Alright, so that's nice and clean. Um, you can actually pop the small tensioner wheel here out. Um, it's a little bit tricky in ways to do it, but you just get underneath it and pull it out at the angle. I do like to give this a nice clean. You know, the inside, all the mechanisms and gears and stuff, if they get too dirty, then they're not going to work properly. So, giving them a nice cleaning helps keep everything working well. And again, a little bit of oil on this is not a bad thing. Again, it's a it's a gear, it's a mechanism. It's plastic against metal, so you, know, you can't be too careful. Um, inside of the mechanism, where we pull this wheel out from, again, we'll just give it a small small scrape out there. We have a tap to release some of the crap again, and that looks pretty good to me. And we'll just give the inside a wipe out with the rag. Everything nice and clean, it makes it so much easier to work on if something happens. You know, you don't have four days worth of build up when your store, store, well, your saw happens to not start. For whatever reason, you can get in, look it over, nice and easy, it'll be nice and clean and you're ready to go. Right, so I'm going to pop all this out again and show you how I put it back in. You're going to start off coming in nice and high on the angle and then lay it over. It'll fit in nice every time. We'll put our cover in. Make sure the big hole sits over the sprue that the, the little plastic gear went over. We'll get our screw. I will use the the carburetor adjust, adjusting screwdriver for this and without dropping the screw we'll get it started okay now, again you have to be careful about cross threading because it's metal into plastic so you know, take your time take it nice and easy and again, no three foot pry bars. It doesn't have to be torqued on you know, till the end of time. It just needs to be nice and tight. All right, so everything's nice and clean. On to the next step. All right, so next I'm going to just jump into the air filter. Um, standard quick release on this saw. Um, one thing I have learned is it's best to have the choke lever all the way down. And that way it'll come off nice and easy because otherwise this portion of the case gets caught on the lever. It also has the added benefit of when you take the air filter off down inside, and if you can see it or not, but the choke is closed. So any crap that falls in there won't go straight into the carburetor. So you want to inspect the air filter. This is relatively clean. It wasn't too dusty when we were cutting. Um, the best way to clean these, if they're not entirely worn out, is a bucket of warm water with a couple of drops of just dishwashing liquid is the best way to do it. Um, you don't want to put a, a full squirt in, it's not necessary, just two or three drops and shake it around, sit it on the shelf, let it dry for about 24 hours before it goes back on the saw. Um, it's always 
another reason it's good to have some backups you can swap one out straight away so this is actually quite good it's quite clean it's a little bit old but it's good so it's just going to go straight back on this is also a good time to inspect the clutch linkages the throttle linkages all that sort of stuff it's all good it all works make sure there's no wearing in the linkages make sure everything looks nice and tight and on this side the throttle linkage still operates fine all that sort of stuff um, yeah make sure everything's nice and tight clean all that sort of stuff um, I don't typically pull the spark plugs every day um, once a week or so I'll pull the spark plug check it give it a bit of a clean if it needs it replace it if it needs it that sort of thing so that's that bit um, the inside of the cover as well is good to clean if it's got any big pieces of wood chip or anything in there because it'll clog your, your filter straight away. So again with the, the master control lever all the way down, put our cover back on, lock it down and then everything works just as it should. So that's fine. Um, on this side of the saw, the, uh, the fueling side, as I've heard people call it. I'm trying to clean off around the caps, that sort of stuff. We want to inspect the caps, make sure that these are the, happen to be the tallest fuel caps. So it makes it just a bit easier. I'm going to pull the caps off. I want to make sure the O-rings are fine. Make sure the, the locking tabs are fine. There's three different ones. There's two big ones and a small one. which correspond with the gaps inside the tank here, which you want to inspect as well. Make sure they haven't been chipped off or anything like that. Um, Rel again, relatively easy. Um, make sure it locks down properly. And again, the same thing with the, the oil side. This side is generally the dirtiest because crap will stick to oil more than it will stick to fuel. So again, inspect your tabs. Inspect the slots inside the tank that the tabs lock into. Make sure everything's fine. and lock the caps back down. A lot of people seem to have trouble with these caps not being able to, well you know, they're a bit of a pain to get in the right position but once they're in the right position they're nice and easy to work with so I don't know why people have such a problem with them but hey that's their thing. Now that I've said that I seem to be having trouble with it but hey there we go. It's not nice and tight and you lock it down. It's just a matter of getting it in the right position to start with <laughs> it's not that simple but that's the simplest way I can explain it just make sure your cap's in the right position it's a 90 degree twist and then it gets locked down it's that easy um, I'm going to check the recoil side make sure that's nice and clean make sure there's nothing big built up in the blades here because that's where your source sucks it's there from so you want it to be getting the cleanest air possible um, it's a good idea to make sure your engine is off and check your starter rope um, check at the full length, make sure it's not frayed or anything along those lines. This is the easy start, so it'll murmur a few times as we pull it out. Um, it's a nice thin rope on this one. But, um, yeah, just make sure it's, it's nice and unfrayed and undamaged. It's nice and strong, because that sucks to have your starter rope break when you're out in the field. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do here is just give the whole body of the saw a dusting. Now the top of the handle, inside these cavities here, over the top of the handle, in here. So this is just daily maintenance, this is after a day's work, this isn't a full service or a full winterizing or anything like that. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty good, you know. Yeah, the clutch drum is one thing I forgot to inspect, you know, just to have a look at the teeth on it. Make sure that you know they're all they're all fine and not excessively worn. If they are excessively worn, it needs to be replaced. Um, yeah. So after everything's had its wipe over, you want to come in with you know, a Torx driver or you know, different kind of driver and just go over all the body screws. You don't want to put so much pressure on them that you're going to strip them or anything like that, you're not trying to tighten them you're just checking the tension, making sure that they're all nice and tight all that sort of stuff yeah. Actually, there's, not, there's not many over the saw, there's a few on the bottom here that hold the bottom of the 
the crankcase into the bottom of the saw. So just make sure that you're nice and tight and too. All that sort of stuff. Check your muffler as well. Make sure that's all nice and tight. A couple on the recoil side, you know. Yeah, the saw gets a lot of vibration, so it's, it's it's good to be able to to check everything. Make sure nothing's coming loose. If it is coming loose, be a Loctite on it. It's more than sufficient. Right, let's get this bad boy back together. Alright, so putting this saw back together is a little bit different than a standard saw just because of the <clears throat> their tallest adjustment. So we have a hole in the middle of the adjustment sprocket here that just goes over the standard bar hole or the bar stud. Have our chain. Now, again, you want this, the points of the cutting teeth pointing forward and then it drapes over the bar. You can do this really any way you want. You can have the chain on the bar when you put it over. You can do it separately like I'm doing here. It really doesn't make any difference. It's just personal preference the way you like to do it. So I like to give this a few turns to give it a little bit of tension before we put the cover on. And then we'll come in with the cover. Find all the holes properly, press it in, and then and you want to be very careful you don't cross thread this because it's very easy to do. When I first bought this saw, I bought it second hand. And the, um, the fellow that sold it to me took it apart to check it was working before I came to pick it up and screwed this back on, cross threaded it, I couldn't get it off. So I had to take it back to him and they replaced this part for me. Um, chain tension on a toolless adjuster is the easiest thing in the world. Um, you want to pick the front of the bar up. Wind this lever up forwards. Take something that takes a bit after you've disassembled it. Roll it forwards until the chain touches the bar. And at that time, this wheel will stop turning. You won't be able to turn it anymore. So you can just turn that wheel until you can't turn it anymore. Tighten down the bar nut, and you're good to go. Good, proper chain tension. Well, that's pretty much it. Um, the last step, again because we're not winterizing, we're just you know, cleaning this up at the end of the day, we're going to refuel it. I've got a two-in-one can here, best invention ever. Holds the bar oil in one side and the fuel mix in the other, so you don't have to lug two bottles of fluid out into, it, out into the field where you're cutting. I've noticed as well on these cans that the um, American version of this item, their spout is different. It looks, yeah, it just looks a bit different. But, I mean, that's, doesn't make much of a difference, it is just a piece of plastic spout, so. Right, I'll fuel this up here, we always want to go nice and slow, so we don't spill any. Yeah. These saws were fueled up right before we finished work, basically, about... 15 20 minutes before we finish cutting, so they don't need a lot. Lock it down, and then you want to wipe off the excess fuel that I spilled because I'm a dickhead. Just keep it nice and clean. Alright, now for the bar oil, same procedure. I'm just going to swap the can around here. I like that it stalls up nice and compact too, you don't have to worry about the spouts and then getting full of crap. It's all contained, it's kept all nice and clean. If it gets covered in sawdust, none will get down inside the, the can and ruin the fuel or the oil. Sometimes it does get a little bit sticky, but it is a relatively new item this one. So. One thing I have noticed about this kind of spout too is you don't want to pull this too hard to get it to lock in nice because otherwise it will just pull it straight out of the top. It's not devastating, it's just inconvenient to have to do that. Right, so, just open up the bar oil here. These fuel cap retainers too are friggin' amazing. Right, so we're going to top it up with bar oil. Come from this side. And once again, they were fueled, they were fueled in oil right before, pretty much right before we stopped. So they're not going to need a lot. Come on, the edge come. There we go. Alright. 
basically where you want to run it to is just below the lugs where these lock in. So you push it down or otherwise that happens and you get oil that leaks everywhere and attracts more dirt and crap which is more crap you have to clean off next time you do your daily maintenance on your saw. So. Keep everything nice and clean, makes it a pleasure to use, makes us all look better, which I know for a lot of people isn't a consideration, but I like to have my tools look nice and look nice and clean. And that's it. She's clean, she's fueled, she's oiled. Just gonna put her bar cover back on. And she's ready for work, more than likely tomorrow. Alright guys, that's it for me today. The, um, the two tenors done, it's ready to go for tomorrow. More than likely tomorrow will be the next time we go and cut wood. Um, again, this isn't a full winterising of the saw, it's just your daily maintenance. After you've done your day's work, take five or ten minutes, clean the saw, oil it, fuel it, make sure everything's clean and working properly, make sure nothing's loose. That way, this saw if something happens whenever, you know, a tree comes down in the road, in the driveway, or something along those lines, something in an emergency situation, you can grab it and go. It's ready. It's ready to roll, no matter what. It's clean, oiled, fueled. You don't have to worry about it. Um, the procedure for a full winterization, or for me it'd be summerization, because we cut our wood in the winter for the next year, so in the summer the saws don't run. Um, is a little bit different, you know, it's a bit more intricate and a bit more involved. Um, I will put up a video of that when it is time to put the saws away for the year. Um, I will also put up a video on this bad boy, the two-in-one file. Um, it's a fantastic unit, that'll probably be the next video up. Um, because this saw does need a, a bit of a touch-up and the other saw I think hit a nail, you know, a pallet when we were working. The, uh, yeah, working earlier, so it's going to need a, a full sharpen, a full grinding. So that's it. Um, comment down below anything you think I need to know, anything you think I should be doing during this maintenance, anything you think I don't need to worry about that I'm doing. But you know, or post a video on what you do and how you clean your saws. That's going to be that's just that would be awesome. But you know. That's it. Keep your saws nice and clean. They're going to run better, they're going to perform better, and you'll get a lot more life out of them. Alright guys, thanks for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.